looking to improve your game, you can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white Angel Company deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This is the latest iteration of the Life Gain deck in Historic, which now gets access to Righteous Valkyrie from Kaldheim, a 3-mana 2-4 Angel Cleric with flying, saying whenever another Angel or Cleric enters the battlefield under our control, we gain life equal to that creature's toughness, and as long as we have 27 or more life, creatures we control get plus 2 plus 2, so a very powerful addition for the deck, and now that we have this many powerful 3 mana creatures, it also makes sense to include Collected Company in this deck, the 4 mana instant that lets us take a look at the top 6 cards of our library and put up to 2 creature cards with converted mana cost 3 or less from among them onto the battlefield. And then the only card we cannot hit with Collected Company in this deck are the two copies of Ajani Strength of the Pride, which is another powerful payoff card for the life gain archetype, especially powerful in the mirror match if you're up against other life gain decks, as we can use the zero ability if we have 35 or more life, then we get to exile a Jani and each opposing artifact and creature, so that's a very powerful sweeper this deck gets access to. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, starting out with our 1-drops, where we've got the full playset of Soul Warden, a 1-mana one 1-1 one -one human cleric, so it also synergizes with our Righteous Valkyrie, saying whenever another creature enters the battlefield, we gain 1 life, that also includes the opponent's creatures. Then we've got Speaker of the Heavens, a 1-mana one 1-1 one -one human cleric once again, with Vigilance and Lifelink, and we can tap Speaker of the Heavens to create a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying, but we can only activate this if we're at 27 or more life, but this deck has so much life gain that it's usually not gonna take long to get there. Then at 2 mana, another very important addition is a Bishop of Wings, a 2 mana one for a human cleric, so another cleric once again, saying whenever another angel enters a battlefield under our control, we gain 4 life, so this can gain a massive amount of life in one fell swoop, and whenever an angel we control dies, we get to make a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying, giving us a little bit of resistance against sweepers as well. Then we've got the full playset of Youthful Valkyrie, which doesn't look like much, but is actually a very important addition for this deck as well, giving us a 2-mana Angel, it's a 1-3 flyer, and whenever another Angel enters the battlefield under our control, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Youthful Valkyrie, so it can very quickly turn into a real threat, especially if it gets the power boost from the Righteous Valkyrie as well. And then we've got two copies of Daxos, Blessed by the Sun, which plays nicely with our Heliot package, adding double white devotion. This one not a cleric, but has toughness equal to our devotion to white, and whenever another creature we control enters a battlefield or dies, we also gain one life, so it's very similar to Soul Warden. Then at 3 mana we get to some of our heavy hitters, including Resplendent Angel, a 3 mana 3-3 three, three angel with flying, saying at the beginning of each end step, if we gained 5 or more life this turn, we get to make a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token with flying and vigilance. And for 6 mana, until end of turn, the angel gets plus 2 plus 2 and gains lifelink, so it can enable its own ability. But for the most part, we can trigger Resplendent Angel through our other life gain effects. If we go turn 1 Soul Warden into a turn 2 Bishop of Wings, turn 3 we get to play Resplendent Angel, we gain 1 life from Soul Warden, we gain 4 life from Bishop of Wings, so that's already enough to generate a 4-4 Angel token end of turn, which once again gains 5 life, so you can see how that can quickly get out of hand. And then we also have the full set of Righteous Valkyrie, of course. Two copies of Heliot Suncrowned, a 5-5 legendary enchantment creature god that's indestructible, but only turns into a creature as long as our devotion to white is at least 5, so that counts up all the white mana symbols on the permanence we control, and whenever we gain life we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature or enchantment we control, so that can also very quickly get out of hand with cards like Soul Warden and Daxos gaining life whenever a creature enters the battlefield, and then for one and a white another target creature gains lifelink until end of turn, so that's another way to enable a lot of our life gain synergies. And then we've got two copies of Angel of Vitality, 3 mana 2 2 flyer, saying if we would gain life, we gain that much life plus 1 instead. So this is especially effective with our cards like Soul Warden and Daxos that gain life in small increments. And then Angel of Vitality gets plus 2 plus 2 as long as we have 25 or more life. And then the top end, we already mentioned a journey and four copies of Collected Company. Then going over the mana base, we've got some green-white dual lands to help us cast Collected Company, as well as 10 basic planes and two copies of Castle Ardenvale as an additional mana sink. That's also quite synergistic with our Soul Warden and Daxos to give us additional life gain triggers. Now, there are definitely a couple flex slots in this deck. We could be playing with Skyclave Apparition to give us a bit of interaction in the main deck, especially useful if we need to take out an opposing Rampaging Ferocidon, which can 
and shut down all our life gain synergies, although it's not going to be useful against Hushbringer, which is another hate card against this deck. And then, of course, we could also be splashing blue for cards like Limvala, a powerful angel that can protect us from sweepers like Ritual of Soot, which can also be very effective against us. And we could also pick up the Glasspool Mimic, which can copy cards like Righteous Valkyrie or Resplendent Angel, which can also be quite powerful. But it does come at a cost of your mana base being a bit more awkward since you need to add a third color. And of course, we do have a lot of double white cards we want to cast on curve, so we can't afford too many tap lands or other non-white lands. And the same goes with adding black for veto, which of course could also be very powerful with all the life gain synergies, but it does come at a cost. So those are some of the potential variations of this life gain deck. But for now, let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty slow hand, but I think being on the play makes this keepable. On the draw, I would mulligan. And then we gotta hope to draw into some of our 1 and 2 drops. There's no shortage of them. Let's see what we're up against. Turn one, blue-red pathway, and opt to some sort of spells deck. Next turn, probably go with Resplendent Angel, since it doesn't die to shock. And uh, turn to Electromancer, so probably a Phoenix deck. Daxo is a turn late. So this should be a reasonable matchup, especially if we can hit a company and uh, gain a bunch of life in one hit. Sort of depends what type of interaction the opponent's packing. If they have some 3 damage burn spells, it might be a different story. But we should eventually be able to go over the top. Alright, so I can go Soul Warden into Angel Vitality here. That looks good. They do seem to be holding some interaction. Maybe a shock for the Soul Warden. And then a Johnny can also potentially gain life with the plus one. Chart, of course, maybe discards Arc Light Phoenix here. Yep, there it is. Electromancer typically points towards a version with the Red Finale to replay cards out of the graveyard. So we might see that here. Get back Opt and Chart, of course. Opt is the only instant in the graveyard right now. Finale Promise. Chart, of course. Can maybe find another Arcline Phoenix. Yep, and they did. So they'll get two back here. So not bad. Although we are getting two life for each one. Now, I could block a Phoenix, but the other one's still going to hit me down to 23, so the Angel's going to lose the plus two plus two bonus. So it would end up trading, which I want to avoid. Heliot's excellent. So now I can go Daxos into Heliot's, which will also gain two life since it's a creature right away. And then we'll pump up some of our angels, I think. And then... Yeah, I think we'll hit for nine. Alright, this seems good. Another Arclight Phoenix hits the graveyard, so as far as hitting Arclight Phoenix, the opponents cannot complain here. Although this just seems like a tough matchup for them. Crash through for Trample. And a Lightning Axe for Resplendent Angel. Alright. 
Maybe should have played around that and pumped my Angel one more. Now... I guess I'll pump my... Angel Vitality by one. They might have another Lightning Axe. Doesn't look like it. Opponent hangs back. And we're at 34, so I need to gain one more life before a Johnny can exile the opponent's board here, basically. I could, if I wanted to, just send the Soul Warden, because I really want to exile the Phoenix instead of having them chump and Phoenix going to the graveyard. So... Let's try that. It's a little sneaky. Might not even be the correct play. But it's kind of cute. So we'll give the ward on lifelink. And then put some additional counters on our angels. And then play a Jani. Yeah, all the opponent's creatures get exiled, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. No two drop, but company should make up for it. Let's see what we're up against. Snow covered plains and Speaker of the Heavens, so. Could be a mirror match, in which case Company is definitely one of our better cards. And then a Johnny could also come in handy if we find it eventually. Turn to Bishop, yep. Yeah. That's a good start. We picked up a Valkyrie at least. And then we still need a fourth land. All right. Think Valkyrie over Heliod. All right, point's got a Skyclave Apparition for youthful Valkyrie, strangely enough. And I think I should main face company since there's a chance I can activate Speaker of the Heavens. Oof, that's ugly. Just a Bishop of Wings. Hopefully the second one does better. And a scroll of Avacyn, all right. Their creatures get plus two, plus two. It's gonna make it difficult to stay at 27 here for Speaker of the Heavens. We'll take eight. And then we gotta hit big with Collected Company here. All right, we did. And then double Resplendent Angel, I think is the play. And now we start making angels each turn. Now we did put an Ajani on the bottom with our Collected Company earlier. So that's kind of the mirror breaker we need in this matchup. Opponents got their own company. 
hits speaker plus bishop. Soul Warden. So we can go Soul Warden into Heliod and then activate Speaker. And then who do we pump? Maybe a token. These get to attack. We were both at 75 life for a brief moment. And then we'll keep pumping some of our tokens here. Especially the vigilant ones. Ooh, opponent's got you, Johnny. Yeah, that's gonna be game. Opponent can make more angels. I guess we could still top deck Corona Johnny here to stabilize, but we only have one left in the top half of our deck. Well, there he is. So, it's not over until it's over. So now we get to start again, but our opponent gets to start again with a collected company. And that's a pretty nice combo. Well, I guess I can't complain. Uh, do I main phase this? Sure. All right, more companies, so opponent's got one left. We have one left. Opponent at 110. But now they're gonna start making resplendent angel tokens, so yeah, this is gonna get out of hand. Alright, we shot our shots, but I think the opponent's gonna get the upper hand here. This is definitely a very unique mirror match. Kind of boils down to whether or not you have a Jani and how good your collected companies are. And of course, drawing collected company. I can double block Resplendent Angel. It's gonna take a second for them to kill us. but they definitely have the upper hand. Skyclave Apparition. Serpent might not be playing too many copies of Heliod and Daxos if they have room for Apparition. So, don't see any great blocks. I guess we could have blocked the spirit token there.
Right, we get our own resplendent angel. Wow, opponent concedes. Well, I guess they were in a hurry and had to do something else, because definitely looked like they were going to win here, but I guess I'll take it. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a hand that's awkward because our land's coming to play tapped, but otherwise it's pretty decent. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of planes in the deck we can draw, so I think we still keep only of the two copies of Castle Ardenvale, but definitely quite punishing here. Facing a mill deck. So against mill, yeah, as long as we can hit our land drops, we should still be fine. We can add a lot of power and toughness to the boards pretty quickly. Alright, blue-green, so they might have some ramp in there too. Get to play Duxos at least. And then untap plan for company, if not, probably go for Valkyrie. Alright, Skewed Swarm, so it might be a Mutate deck. And I'm just gonna main phase company here. Alright, Resplendent Angel... ...times two. Seems fine. Soul Warden could also be good against Skewed Swarm, I suppose. But we just want the Flyers. And then... Could attack with speaker. If we had Righteous Valkyrie in play already, then Double Angel would have made two tokens end of turn, which of course would have been nice. But I think going for the company is still the play. Ooh, escape shifts. All right, so they're gonna get a whole bunch of landfall triggers here. They can get Fabled Passage. Although they're not making Scoot Swarm copies yet, so it's just a Rune Crab that we have to worry about. They've already used one Fabled Passage. So, let's see. Let's say they have four fetch lands. That's eight times three, 24 cards milled with Rune Crab. Still not lethal. But if they have another Rune Crab in hand, I guess we could be dead. A youthful Valkyrie to draw. So I'm not gonna get to trigger Resplendent Angel here, am I? I can gain life from Daxos and from Speaker. It's not quite enough. So I guess we'll play Righteous Valkyrie and then next turn Youthful Valkyrie will trigger it. Yeah, definitely a slower start than I would have liked. Not getting to trigger Resplendent Angel here. But next turn there's also a chance we get to plus two bonus and just kill the opponents. So they have to kill me here, probably by playing another rune crab or some other mill effect. Another escape shift could also do it.
All right, so we're down to 14 cards. Field of Rune. All right, so that's an extra trigger with a Rune Crab as well. And we'll block. Speaker probably... Let's see. I mean, Speaker's going to be too slow no matter what, so I think I should block with it. Also gets me a Daxos trigger. Just want to keep our life total high so we can trigger Valkyrie here. And then now I get to play Heliod and Valkyrie. Don't know if Deep Point's playing Fog Effects, perhaps. Let's get in there with our flyers. And at a blink of an eye. Yeah. And I imagine we're gonna be dead here. Field of Ruin my pathway. I'm not gonna search here to keep more cards in my library. So we're down to seven. And a Cultivate's gonna mill me for another three. So four cards remain. Yeah, this rune cramp did a lot of work by himself. One card left, so if we did search with the field of ruin, we would have been dead here. Alright, GG's. So, very close one. Came down to the last card against Blue Green Scapeshift Mill. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with the ideal opening hand pretty much. Soul Warden into Bishop into Resplendent Angel, make a token end of turn. Up against Elves. Elves I think is a fine matchup, especially with this start. They can definitely go over the top if they have like a turn two Elvish Archdruid of a Lenor Elves. They can potentially kill us and go even bigger than we can in a faster time span, but this is pretty much the best draw our deck is capable of. Not gonna tank just in case they have some flash elf. It's gonna be a Lanor Visionary, so they're not off to the fastest start, and this Resplendent Angel is pretty much gonna seal the deal already. And next turn we've got another one. Marwyn the Nurture into a Lenor Elves. So next turn they can maybe activate Olasar's Shepherd, but I don't think that's gonna be enough. As we have another Resplendent Angel. And we'll play Speaker 2. Up to 45. So we can take 20 damage and still have some life to spare. Clan Caller is essentially free since it pumps Marwyn by 2. 
And another visionary. But our opponent is facing lethal in the skies. Alright, sweet. So, quick one here against Elves, another popular deck in Historic. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand seems keepable. Bishop of Wings plus double Youthful Valkyrie can gain a lot of life in the meantime. And now we're gonna get to curve into Righteous Valkyrie first. Opponent on what looks like a controlling snow deck. Ooh, discard. Alright. Yeah, we'll play Bishop. Into Righteous Valkyrie. It's gonna be a Thoughtseize, which... It's gonna take a Jani, which draws a card with Waste Knot. And a Tiny Bones gonna draw a card end of turn. Alright. Another Waste Knot into Vicious Rumors, which gets a Valkyrie here, I think. Could also keep double Youthful Valkyrie, but I think keeping the Righteous is going to be better long term. Should be able to raise the Zombies, especially now with Resplendent Angel. Hit for four. Could also tank with Bishop of Wings, really. Make an Angel on a turn. Alright, let's hope they don't have a Sweeper. Although if they do, we'll still get a few Spirit Tokens at least. Alright, Shadow's Verdict, never mind. Exiles everything. But Speaker of the Heavens is kind of a one-man army. So if Speaker survives, we can still recover nicely. Opponent definitely came prepared for the matchup. Shadow's Verdict, a slower but more effective Ritual of Suits against a lot of decks that are using these life gain synergies. Three cards in hand. Do they have removal for speaker? It's gonna be a Liliana. So the answer is yes. And then we wanna take out Liliana, I believe. And we'll empty our hand so Waste Knot doesn't give the opponent any additional bonuses. Alright, we're top decking. This is a spot where we wanna find a collected company. Inscription gonna take out Valkyrie. And another Tiny Bones, which can start dealing 10 to us. There's a company. I think we'll wait. Although the opponent's probably gonna know what's up here. Disciple. In response, company. That way, Soul Warden gets to trigger here too. Not the best company hit, but better than nothing. Faceless Haven gonna get in there. We'll take eight. Valkyrie, excellent draw. From the Soul Warden, which can attack and can give it lifelink too here. Alright, we're top decking, they can deal 10 to me, but we're easily out racing it with our life gain. So 
So we'll send in both, and our opponent sees the riding on the wall and concedes. So interesting game here against Monoblank Discard. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Turn one, probably Soul Warden into Youthful Valkyrie. Up against the Colorless deck. Ooh. Resplendent Angel was a nice draw. Against the Colorless deck, we could have maybe afforded Speaker, but they might still be something else. Since they're not going to present many early blockers for the 1 1. The Legion's End. Alright. At least we didn't have a second copy in hand. And then here. Yeah, we'll go with the uh, Valkyrie. And next turn, probably just curve into Resplendent Angel for the most damage. Soul Warden off the top. Yeah, I think we still play the Angel. And if I pick up a land, we can maybe first go Soul Warden plus Heliod and then Company. Or we could go for Company right away to hope to trigger Resplendent Angel. Alright, now that we picked up a Youthful Valkyrie, I'm liking Soul Warden into Youthful Valkyrie. Into maybe next turn Heliod. Or I could Heliod now and next turn he could already turn into a creature. If there's no more interaction here. So kind of a close call. Although if I hit a land I want to go straight into Collected Company. So I think Soul Warden to Youthful is fine. If the opponent has something like Extinction Event, we also have a nice spread of mana costs, so it's not too bank-breaking. And yeah, there it is. Land means company, and I think I main phase it just to pump the Valkyries. Alright. So another extinction event's not going to be all that great here. Forsaken Monuments. Into Guardian Idol, but our opponent's still dead on board. Sweet, so yeah, even through some sweepers and disruption here, we still managed to assemble a powerful board state. So this green-white Angel Company deck is the real deal. Can definitely hold its own against a lot of the top-tier decks in Historic. Might be one of the better especially best-of-one decks in the format, but that doesn't mean that there aren't answers to it. So you can play cards like Hushbringer, Rampaging Ferocidon as creature answers, and then, as we've seen, sweepers like the Shadow's Verdict and Ritual of Soot at 4 mana are also very effective at neutralizing the board. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.